Israel's top commander, Major General Yair Golan, said that Syrian President Bashar al-Assad could cling to power for years despite having lost over all control of his country. In comments to an Israeli newspaper on Wednesday, he said, quote, he will stay on for years. I don't see any force toppling him tomorrow morning, though he deserves to pass from this world. And the quicker that happens, the better. Uh, I have to ask you, Israel struck Syrian government military targets and said that they are targeting Hezbollah. In a sense, this means that they're aiding the rebels or the opposition against Assad, uh, even if they don't admit as much. But, but the struggle is, who are these rebels that they could presumably be indirectly aiding? Because as you know, we've heard, heard the Syrian foreign minister say that there are rebel fighters or foreign fighters from 83 countries. Uh, many other groups have, have said there are dozens of people in there. What do you make of the Israeli comments? And, and, and is it true that the, the rebels, uh, that there are 83 countries or people from 83 countries fighting in Syria? Uh, what I always tell people, Israel will, will do what's in, Israel, in Israel's best interest, the same as the U.S., is the same as any other country. And now, if you look at the makeup of the rebel forces on the ground, the majority of the forces fighting on the ground are moderates. However, we have two extreme groups fighting in Syria. You have Assad and the mercenaries, Hezbollah militias, yeah. uh, a terrorist organization, fighting on one side, supported by Russia, by Iran. Russia until now sends two to four shipments of weapons per week to Assad, although he, it, they know that he's going to use these weapons to kill his people. And you also have on the other side, uh, the extremists. They are a minority. Their numbers are anywhere between five to 10,000. And just speaking about the numbers versus 100,000 moderate forces fighting on the ground. The challenge is the moderates are not receiving enough support from the international community. So, so Khaled, Khaled, can I stop you there? They're not receiving enough international support. I'd agree with you, at least, you know, objectively on that. That's at least what they're saying uh, repeatedly. But I have to ask you, are they as effective? Have they been as effective as some of these other groups like Jabhat al-Nasra, some of these other radical groups? Because it seems that in media reports here in the Arab world and in the West, that is the perception. Well, well, I think it's, it's very simple to look at the reality. Uh, look at the first liberated uh, liberated province in Syria, Raqqa. It was liberated by traditional FSA. And then these extremist groups just showed up and took control, which right. is something that we miss tremendously. Deir Zor is 98% liberated, not a single uh, ISIS uh, fighter over there. You look at Hama, not a single ISIS, uh, uh -huh. the Islamic State right. of Iraq. You look at the Damascus, you look at the majority of the areas. Those guys are not actually on the front lines fighting, which is a misconception. They wait until the FSA fight the war. And and then they jump in and they try and rule because they have they have a plan. They want to establish a state for themselves, a state within the state. So they don't want they're not interested in fighting. Right. I said they're interested in fighting ordinary Syrians. And Khalid, Syrian. they are fighting against some of the more moderate forces, of course, uh, as we know, in terms of trying to achieve their their separate plans of you know creating an Islamic state or what have you. Uh, Khalid, very quickly, last ten seconds, we want to move on. But anything you want to add? Uh, what, what I say is Syrians want their freedom and they want to see Bashar al-Assad put on trial. Uh, we know it's going to be a very expensive price that we have to pay. It's just a question for us before we achieve victory, what that price is going to be. We're at 110,000 people dead, 110,000 fallen heroes. It's a question to the free world. What kind of world we live in? Do we have to wait until 200, 300, 500,000 people are dead before we achieve our right. victory in democracy and freedom?